So crazy thing, I have the new 69.2 beta, 10.692, which not only did I not know I had, but I didn't realize was such a big deal. So let's try it out. You know what, let's just kick it off from the driveway. Yeah, all right, let's see how it leaves. Well, not a good start. I wanted to dart right at that fence. Um, I might have to try that out again later and just see why it did that. But let's go ahead and engage this again. All right, so we're engaged, leaving my neighborhood. So just like before, it's extremely cautious when it approaches the stop. Um, but I feel like it was maybe a little bit more confident than before. Normally it would, you know, it stops enough to piss off the person behind you. Now it just seemed like they would be slightly irked. So that's an improvement. Let's see how it makes the left here. Now it is going left. It's pretty far to the right side of the road. It's just one lane, but this, this would prevent somebody from trying to make a right turn on a red light if they came up behind me, which might be happening here. No, nope, he's making a left good. Because I don't want to interfere, but I also want to let it do its thing. And we're green. Okay, instant go. So far, so good. Yeah, okay, I'll take over. I'm sorry. Uh, rather, I'll put my hand on the steering wheel like I should. Okay. Slowing down from a reasonable distance. Right behind an Ionic, which by the way, these are fantastic cars. Yep, the Ionic creeped forward, so we did too. So it started off strong and then it slowed down right before it crossed the intersection, I think just to make sure there's no red light runners. Sorry, I don't have a phone mount. I'm holding it as best I can while watching the road and not the camera. So let me go ahead and let it go five over. Feels like a little bit more reasonable of a California way of driving. Now these lights get a little confusing for a human. I don't know how autopilot's going to handle this. So go through the first intersection. We're on the brakes. I can feel it. You can see the regen. It's changing lanes because it thinks the Ionic's going too slow. Slowing down. It's, it slows down every time it passes an intersection before it approaches the next. Okay, it's all speed limit sign. Set the speed limit down to 40. Let's go ahead and bump to 5 over again. It's slowing down pretty hard. The guy behind me changed lanes and it looked like I was brake checking in, which is not what I was trying to do. It's signaling to the left now. Not quite sure why. Perhaps these lanes merge up ahead. Wow, they do indeed. Through traffic merge left. So it's not just using its vision. It, it does have some sort of uh, like GPS as far as which lanes to take. Okay, risky intersection of the day. And then through the railroad. Fantastic. Merge. Is it going to shoot out to the right like it always does? No. Okay. Tesla owners with the experience will know uh, when, you're, when you're driving on the highway or anytime there's a lane that's merging from your right side, as soon as those lanes merge, it sees it as one very wide lane and sees itself as being in the far left, so it wants to correct and go center. So anytime you have a, a, a merge, what happens is the car shoots over to the right and then kind of darts back to the left as the, the lanes get narrower, and it just sometimes creeps out the person to your left because it feels like you're going to come back and swing him, which is reasonable for them to freak out because nobody would drive like that.
Five over, coming up on a light. Pretty simple stuff so far. I noticed no difference in acceleration, so that speed felt consistent through that intersection. I have my hand just here on the left side a little bit, just to give it a little bit of pressure and to, uh, to take over if needed. But as you can see, I am on FSD. The car is driving itself. I'm not doing anything. It's been fire season here in California. Uh, you can probably tell it's smoky in the sky. I love being able to look over, by the way, with, with these cars. Just you can enjoy the views for little brief moments before you look back on the road. But uh, all the smoke is coming from um, the mosquito fire out in Forest Hill area right now, which is really sad. <laughs> Wait, was that? Is that guy asleep in his Tesla? I feel like the driver of that Tesla was asleep just now. Am I wrong? I am going to have to go back and look at that footage later. <laughs> Wait, was that? Is that guy asleep in his Tesla? I feel like the driver of that Tesla was asleep just now. Am I wrong? I am going to have to go back and look at that footage later. <laughs> That couldn't have, I couldn't have seen that right. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's adjusting my zoom. So part of the new update is this little camera. This little camera is a lot more active than it used to be. Um, and it, it is very quick to let you know if it's not happy with what you're doing. Um, if I look at my phone, if it sees that my eyes are looking at my phone rather than the, the road, I will get that notification of pay attention to the road. Um, if it sees that, you know, my eyes are not looking forward, same thing, or if I'm looking down, same thing. All right, it's a little sunny, so I put on my sunglasses. Let's see how it handles it. So I feel it's slowing down. It's taking the correct side, fortunately. This is a cluster f It's signaling, it's changing lanes. It is a little bit close to those cones. Why are you beeping at me? You're driving. So it handled it perfectly. It's just, you know, as when you don't have control, it makes you a little nervous when things are getting cut close, even though it might be a, a normal way to drive if you were a human. I'm glad it's not getting confused with all the arrows telling it to change lanes because it definitely sees them. Oh, I didn't register that last time, but these lanes. Okay. Well handled, I'd say. Oh, I gotta, let's navigate me back home. It's gonna make the left here. Let's see how it does it. So this is a T-intersection three-way stop. Signal's on. It does decelerate from quite a distance, which is a little confusing when you're approaching an intersection you need to be communicating with people because, like, look how I'm... Yeah, I should. That person should go first. Good. Now, if I was a, a real driver, I would have gone in front of them, but I wouldn't have taken my time like that. So it did the left turn reasonably well. I will say from the beginning and still currently, my biggest gripe with the, the FSD beta is how overly cautious it approaches the, the four-way stops and those kinds of intersections. Um, I'm, I'm more than okay with it being cautious once it gets there, creeping forward, all that, but the, the slow way it approaches is, um, oh, it's gonna try to make a U-turn here. So I'm actually gonna, what should I do? Uh, let me disengage for a little bit. I'm sorry, I'm cheating. Um, I don't want it to flip a UE here, so I had to disengage it. Um, but it's, yeah, I don't mind if it if it's very cautious once it gets to the stop, if it creeps forward very slowly, you know, it, it, all that. It's just when it approaches it in such a, uh, like, uncertain way, you make other drivers uncertain, right? You need It needs to be a little more assertive when it approaches the intersection so you know who was there first. 
and that's just that's a good rule of thumb for even if you're driving yourself is the the only thing more important than being polite on the road is being predictable let you know be assertive when you need to be not aggressive just be assertive when you need to be be predictable use your signals rules of the road we got this all right so converging here this Honda really, really wanted to merge in front of me, but that's okay. They can wait. And I'm going to just manually drive for a little bit because it keeps wanting to flip U-turns here. There we go. So I'm letting it go five over. It's going to make a left turn at this light, and let's see how it handles it. Slowing down. It's not handling this well. Okay. It sees that the Honda's there. Huh. Nope. Yep, I didn't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and disengage this. And we'll go a different way. So right off the bat, the locals don't like me. Hey, a Lotus! It didn't see that left turn in time, or rather it didn't see where the lane was starting. So it took a little bit longer to get there. And by the time it wanted to make that left turn, that Honda that was on my earlier uh, wanted to take the lane. Now they did give me space once they saw the signal, but my car was uncertain and didn't want to make the turn. So instead it did the worst thing it could have done and it stopped in the forward lane. Last thing I wanted is it just for it to stop. And then someone who was coming behind all of us had to swerve around me because, you know, I was standing still in the middle of a highway. So that was not the best. Let's let it take over again. Let's slow down to five over again. Okay, we're turning left. Why are we moving so far right? Okay, this one was way better. And I'm, I'm really trying not to interfere, obviously, so you guys can see exactly... Why am I saying you guys? No one's watching this. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to not take over for, for reference for this video so that, that it can be seen exactly how, you know, this version of FSD would handle things. But when I'm actually driving the car, so in a situation like that at the intersection... First, let's see how this handles it. Pretty good. In the situation where, you know, I wanted to turn left earlier and I ended up stopping in the middle of the road... I would have seen that coming from a mile away. I mean, not literally a mile away, but I would have seen that coming. I would have made a, you know, I would have taken over. I would have put it in its lane and I would have let it take back over. Or while I was talking just now, going through that intersection, when the guy in front of me was turning right, I would normally give the accelerator a little juice. Like you can, you can add some acceleration without disengaging FSD. See, I just showed. Um, so normally I would do that if it's really taking its time through intersection like it did. Because, again, you want to be predictable. You don't want to piss off other people. Um, they're just trying to get home. I'm driving around having fun in my car. So, let's give it five over. See, right here I would normally accelerate a little bit, but it's okay. All right, so we have a cyclist driving toward me in the, the bike lane. I don't think that'll be an issue. Yeah, it's not going to be an issue there. They're close to the sidewalk. Look, it detects everything, everyone. Other side of the road, no problem. So which lane will we choose here and why? Okay. And then how will it handle the light? Yeah, I will say that braking coming up on a red light feels much more natural than it did before. It, it, it does feel pretty human. Like, I don't think you can tell that that was autopilot if you were driving behind me. But leaving the intersection as well as coming up on the four-way stop signs. Those are very noticeable, to say the least. 
Obviously, we're resisting the urge to punch it as soon as the light turns green. Pretty reasonable. I'd go a little quicker, but I mean, I'm going around the same speed a little bit quicker than traffic around me, so that's, I would say, quite reasonable. Let's give it five over. That time it felt like it didn't notice that intersection until it did because the brakes did not apply smoothly. They were there all of a sudden, like it suddenly realized, oh, there's a red light ahead. Okay, and then I guess, oh, let's see how it handles this. Is it gonna run this red light? Wow. So, as a human driver, I would have I would have braked there 100%, no questions asked. I, I was fully prepared just now, if there was a camera there or a cop there, I was fully prepared to accept a ticket because that looked like I was about to run the light. Um, obviously these lights are timed and it's based on the speed limit and I'm assuming these are all things that the computer has in mind because there was no hesitation whatsoever. It was just like, I'm going to make this light now. That's crazy. Wow, that was, yeah, I thought I, <laughs> I, thought I was gonna run that red light. So in some situations, the, the computer really does know better than the human. In some situations. For me, at least, the litmus test is would I trust this car to drive around my grandpa, who's in his 80s, without me worrying about him having to interfere or do anything? And as of right now, I love Tesla, I love FSD. The answer is a hard no. So someone's in my blind spot. The car's slowing down very drastically to let... It never wants to look at that. There's someone there, and he's honking at me, so I'll take it. I'm, I'm accelerating now to, to, to get in the lane, but it did not want to... Uh, be assertive there, which I get. Legally speaking, I am in the lane merging. I do have to yield to traffic that's already here. And that's that's good. I don't think that was necessarily, you know, the wrong move. Maybe it was a little bit more on the other driver. Oh, I was about to signal over here, but let's see how the car handles it by itself. I'm not comfortable with this. All right, I'm going to take over and brake here because I couldn't escape to the left because that guy was hauling. And I didn't want to startle this guy by coming up on his butt just because I'm trying to test my software. But let's let's take over again. Let's give it 10 over now. Wow, I don't know if I finished my thought earlier. I was saying the litmus test is what it, you know, would I feel, feel comfortable to throw my grandpa in here and have him be driven around? Uh, and the answer to that is just a, a no, absolutely not. Uh, I love it. it it takes a lot of stress off like when I'm driving, like moments like this, or when I do my commutes through the Nevada desert or down to Southern California, down the five or the 99 or anything like that. Like you just wanna, I mean this, or when I was working in San Francisco, bumper to bumper traffic going over Bay Bridge or something, right? You just, you flip it on and you don't worry about it. Um, and I think Tesla's pretty decent at that. It's just, it's the edge cases obviously. And, and then it's like the intricacies of all the different intersections, the complex intersections. All right, we'll see how it handles the merging here pretty well. I feel a little more confident testing it out around other Tesla drivers because if my car does something ridiculous, I feel like they, you know, they'd understand. <laughs> What's funny too is some of the things that happen today, I like they never happen when I'm just FSDing on a normal day. But because I busted out the camera and said I'd make a video about it. Of course, everything that could go wrong did. Oh, and I do have it set so I have to manually confirm, oh, well, it went away. Manually confirm lane changes on the freeway. See that? See how it kind of moved over to the right because it saw the lane get wide? That's, that's the one thing that for some reason feels to me like it would be such an easy fix, but Apparently not, or at least it's not a priority. That's been an issue for a long time. Watch this merge. It's gonna suddenly see the streets become wide and it goes over to the right. You don't notice it too much. Perhaps you don't, but you can definitely feel it. You can feel your car swaying one way or the other and then 
from the outside, I think you can tell quite a bit as well. I got a new phone. This is my first time recording a video with it. This is my first time recording a video with the intention of putting it on the internet in the way that I'm going to. So I'm obviously going to have a lot of things to work out. But I was just really excited about the new software and I just wanted to get it out there. When I'm driving, I will manually make sure it stays in that right lane and I keep this lane open. Right now, obviously, there's... Why did I think that was going to work? Uh, <laughs> let's do this instead. Uh, right now, there's obviously nobody behind me. And so I feel comfortable just kind of letting it do its thing. The guy's waiting for me. It's slotting itself nice in the middle. No signal yet. So it never signaled for that merge, where I would say, I feel like every other time it's ever done a merge, it signaled, but that time it didn't. Okay, so we have pretty standard merge. No one's in my blind spot. It sees the lane it needs. So why is it not signaling? Something about this update made it so it no longer signals when it's merging, at least not in the couple instances I just saw. Here it's prompting me to change lanes, which I will do because it sees the merge approaching. But if I'm not mistaken, if you drove to the end of the merge, it used to signal if you were in the, the yielding lane. Maybe I'm mistaken, but that's how I remember. So we're at speed limit here. We're going to be taking this exit, which is sort of an abrupt lane that appears. Hopefully, why do I keep why do I keep thinking this is gonna show what I'm seeing behind me? Um, I gotta show you from my eye. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's let's see how it handles this. Signals correctly. See, kind of abrupt, shaky. It's okay. We're still going 65. Now we're 60. Now we're set to 55. It sees the recommended speed of 30, I'd assume, but because it's not a speed limit. Uh, now we're down to 45, should be right lane here, 35, still no signal. I, I mean, I could be mistaken here, but I could have sworn this was all signals before. Now it's signaling correctly, it also kind of brake checked the dude behind me. <laughs> but I mean, like, hey, don't tailgate people, you know? Okay, so it's approaching this cautiously, and now it's a green light, good thing, because I think I was going to piss off the person behind me if I if it wasn't. Most of the rest of the drive should be pretty straightforward, and I feel like it handles most of these streets really well. Overall, I'm impressed with it. I noticed it since 69.1, which I also didn't know that was a big deal when I got it, but after I drove it, I was like, wow, this feels much more like a human is driving it. Not the best driver, but a decent human driver most of the time. Uh, obviously, we threw some edge cases at it today, and it handled those a little strangely. But overall, I've been very impressed with the software. Enough to put my grandpa in it? No. But, you know, enough to keep buying the stock, enough to have hundreds of shares and, and thirst for more? Yes, absolutely. Okay, it's handling... It always makes me a little nervous when it ticks those corners with the, the curb so close, but it's never curbed a wheel, so I'm happy. So these flashing stop signs that are all throughout my neighborhood most of the time, registers as a stop sign, works fine. You can see it's creeping forward to check on visibility, all clear, good to go. But the other night, I got stuck at a stop sign because I thought it was a stop light. And I think he was just waiting for the stop sign to turn green. So yeah, I definitely had to manually take over there. See, it breaks a little far in advance, just a little too far in advance for my liking. It takes a while to come to a complete stop as well, which again, I would rather it be assertive. Uh, it's not, not that I'm trying to get to the intersection before anyone else, I just want it to be much more apparent to everyone around me when exactly I break and when exactly it's my turn to go. Because again, it's all about communication and being predictable when you're on the road. That's how to be a good driver, is to be a safe and predictable driver. 
Well, we're basically home. So I guess I'll leave it at that. I'll probably upload this right away. Today's September 11th. Uh, see, creeping forward, it sees the pedestrian crossing with their dog. But it's very... Yeah, apply lights. So it was very cautious there, and I think it's because there was a pedestrian in the road. Um, so yeah, as far as this thing not reacting to kids on the road, like, no chance that... I, I don't know if you guys saw that kind of smear video, but no chance. This car, if anything, is overly cautious. Alright. It always cuts that corner a little bit there. Well, that's it for this. I'll upload it. Feedback is welcome. Um, if you want me to try anything, give me a shout. I'm in the Roseville, Rockland area, basically Sacramento, and I'm happy to drive within 50 miles if there's any particular roads you guys want to see. So uh, just let me know, and thanks for your time.